we have here the specimen paper um, for the Pure Mathematics 1 IAL, question number 4. Um, this question is about indices. Okay, again, it's mentioned very clearly about showing all steps of the working and, um, you know, solutions relying on calculator technology are not acceptable. So you have to show the examiner you know exactly how to deal with indices without the use of your calculator. Okay, so question part one, it mentions here. Question part one. Um, given that 4a over 2 to the power of 3b equals 32 times root 2, use the laws of indices to write a in terms of b. Okay, so in this question here, we are to use the laws of indices to solve this question. Okay, so we have to do the following. Okay, we can see here that the numbers we have are all numbers which can be expressed in terms of powers of two. Okay, when dealing with problems with um, indices, okay, um, it's always a good idea to try to express everything to the same base. And I can see that four can be expressed as 2 to the power of something. 2 to the power of 3b is also already expressed as 2 to the power of something. 32 can be expressed as 2 to the power of 5. And the square root of 2 can be expressed as 2 to the power of a half. So if we just do that, if we just express everything in terms of 2s, so we got 2 squared, oops, let me just fix this in place. Okay, so what we have here is we have 2, so I'll write it out again so we can see what's going on. You've got 4 to the power of a is the same as 2 squared to the power of a, which you can write as 2 to the power of 2a. Okay, 32 is the same as 2 to the power of 5. And the square root of 2 is the same as 2 to the power of a half. So we can take all of these. So we can rewrite 4a as 2 to the power of 2a. Okay, remember, you're going to multiply the powers. You will have something raised to a power, to another power, you and multiply the powers. And that's divided by 2 to the power of 3b equals, and you've got 2 to the power of 5, which is a 32, times 2 to the power of a half. So now we can use the laws of indices in terms of how to simplify this. Okay, now, when you are dividing two numbers in index form, you subtract the powers. You have 2 to the power of 2a minus 3b. Okay, they have the same base. 2, divide, division, you, do, you divide the power, you subtract the power, sorry. And when you're multiplying two numbers with the same base in index form, you add the power. So it's 2 to the power of 5 and a half, which is 11 over 2. Okay, so you, this is like 2 to the power of, this part is like 2 to the power of 5 plus a half. Okay, which is 5 and a half, which is 11 over 2. So, okay, so now uh, we're going to just make, once we've made the bases the same, okay, once the bases are the same, I say 2 to the power of 2a minus 3b equals 2 to the power of 11 over 2. Once we know that the bases are the same, Therefore, the powers must also be the same because these two sides are equal. Okay, so 2 to the power of something equals 2 to the power of, of course, must be the same thing. They're equal to each other. So we can say 2 to the power of 3a minus b is equal to 11 over 2. Okay, now we want to make a the subject of this formula because it says in the question, it says to write a in terms of b. So it should say a equals and there should be something there with b in it okay so a in terms of b means a equals and there's something with b in it okay a in terms of b so a should be the subject so what i'm going to do here is to make my life a bit easier i will just get rid of the fraction so i'll multiply both sides by two first so i have 4a minus 6b equals 11 and then i will add 6b to both sides so 4a equals 11 plus 6 b and then i'll make myself a bit more space then i can divide both sides by four so i can say a is going to be 11 plus 6b 
over 4. Now they didn't specify any particular form. Sometimes they'll say as, you know, um, a number plus something B, whatever. No, it's given it in open-ended. So we can leave it as A in terms of B as one whole fraction as we have, or as two separate fractions. You could write it as 11 over 4 if you wanted to, 11 over 4 plus, and that will be 4 over 6 over 4, which will be divided by 2, 3 over 2 plus 3 over 2B. You could also write that if you wanted to. I guess you could also write them in decimal form, but it doesn't specify, so it's fine to leave it in any of these ways. So I prefer this way. I'll leave it as one fraction. So that's part one done. Now we're going to do part two, where it tells us to solve this equation, uh, giving your answer as a simplified search. So it means in exact form. So I don't want to find out what root two is and use that. I want to basically keep it in third form. Now this is a pretty simple question, although a lot of people get confused by this. Root two is just a number, like the number four or five or six, just a number, okay, it's a constant. Okay, so when we're solving an equation, if the equation said three x equals two x plus 14, there would be absolutely nobody who would have any problem with this question. They'd think it's just like something in grade seven or six, just, okay, we've got to bring the x's together, all right? And this is exactly what we have to do here. This is an x term and an x term. This is just a number, just like the number two was. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the x's together on one side of the equation. So 3x minus x times root 2 is equal to 14. Now, I could find out what root 2 is, which is 1.41 or whatever, and then subtract 3x and 1.41x and give me, it will give me a decimal, but that will not achieve my objective of giving the answer in as a simplified set. So when you've got a question like this, what we can do is, we can take x as a um, factor. So we have x is common, and we're left with 3 minus root 2 inside the bracket, and that's equal to 14. And to find x, we've got to divide by 3 minus root x. So 14 divided by 3 minus root 2, sorry. Okay, so 3 minus root 2. Now, it says as a simplified third. That means the denominator has to be rational. Okay, you have to rationalize the denominator. Here we have 3 minus root 2. We have to multiply it by what's called its conjugate, okay, which will cause the, the roots to disappear from the denominator. The conjugate is exactly the same thing except with the opposite sign between them. So the middle term, which will be the root term, will disappear. But then you have to multiply the numerator by the same thing. Okay, so when you simplify that, you've got 14 times 3, through, that's 30 plus 12, that's 42, plus 14 root 2. Could have just left it as 14 actually it just um, multiplying the bracket without multiplying the brackets um anyway now we also got here three times three which is nine the middle term disappears you see three times root two is three root two minus three root two three root two minus sorry three root two minus three root two gives you zero and minus root two times root two is minus two okay root two times root two is just two and you've got a minus and a plus minus so you'll end up with um, 42 plus 40. Now I can see that there's going to be a 7 coming out of. There's going to be a 7 under this. So I'm going to factorize the numerator. I know 7 goes into both of these. 7 times 6 plus 2 root 2 over 7. And the 7s will cancel out, you see? So you're left with 6 plus 2 root 2 as your answer. Just about fit on the page. Okay, so that's how you deal with questions of this form. Okay, so you give your answer as a simplified cert. Okay, so the trick here is to bring the x's on one side and then take out x as a factor. That's the trick here. Okay, thank you. That's, that's question number, number four done now, this paper.